Hey everyone. Today I wanted to do a quick demo uh, explaining the different variable scopes in Halo Infinite Forge. Uh, so this should be pretty quick, but um, just kind of wanted to explain it because it's really helpful to understand as you start to build things. And there's not, at least currently, there's not really any sort of demo that, that shows you how to do this. So you kind of just have to know it. Um, first thing is, we'll just take a look here. Um, I'm not going to really go into local object scope. Um, so it, you'll have three levels of scope. There's local. Local pretty much just means if you have a, a script uh, brain, local variables are only going to be able to be used within that specific script brain. You can't go to any other script brain and use them. They're locked inside that one script brain, which is helpful if you don't want those things ever leaving. Like if you don't want details of certain things leaving a script brain. Um, it, otherwise, I mean, if you want things available for other brains, you might just go global. Um, and for small scale stuff, it really probably won't matter. Once you start getting really complex, you got to really be careful or at least know what you're doing with these different scopes. Um, but first, I want to talk about object scope, and so I set I set up some stuff to to do this. Uh, first off, though, just to kind of explain object scope, if if anyone watching this is aware or familiar with object oriented programming, um, it, it's kind of like that. You have each object can have variables. As, well, excuse me, pretty much every dynamic object. You can assign variables to it, and those variables then are kind of just linked to that object. So once you create an object scoped variable, every dynamic object in your map can can basically assign something to that variable for its specific self. And it's a little bit complicated, but I, I want to show you kind of a visual. So I have th here three dynamic objects. We have vehicles, which are automatically dynamic. And we have this bracken fern, small bracken fern, which I put dynamic. So now I can use it with scripts. I've already added those to our script. Then I have buttons one, two, and three. And I've assigned um, a number, which I'll show you in a second, to each of these. So the ghost will be have a one, the gun goose will have a two, and then the bracken fern has a three. So let's go into the script here, and I'll show you kind of what we have going on. So the very first thing is we we declared a number variable. I called it object scope just so it's not confusing. And notice how I put the scope to object level. It starts out at a zero, okay? Um, this is just our trigger here. It doesn't really matter how you trigger it, but I just put every n seconds because I it was easy. But the the basically what we're doing here, the very first thing, is we're setting a number variable to our object scope. But keep, again, keep in mind on object level, every one of every one of these objects has as soon as we declare it has an object scope uh, variable within it. So ghost, the ghost has object scope that's going to be zero starting out. Gun goose has object scope that's zero. Brackenfern has object scope that's zero. What we're doing now is we're setting them to something different. So notice we're using the exact same variable here, but we're setting ghost is one, uh, gun goose is two, and Brackenfern is three. And if we come down here, we we assigned those to their corresponding switches. So Switch one, when you interact with it, we're going to print the number to the kill feed and we're printing object scope that's linked up to ghost. And remember, we assigned ghost to be one. And the interesting part is we're using the exact same variable here, but when we link up the object here at this bottom part to an object, we're using whatever specifically that object is. So if we never changed the number, it would just be our default zero. But since we changed ghost, we changed gun goose, and we changed the fern, they're all going to have their own numbers. So that, that's kind of the part that's difficult to wrap your head around when you're first getting into this. 
you're using the exact same variable name, but it's kind of like it duplicates itself across every single dynamic object so you can access as long as you plug your object in. So what we're what I'm going to do now, let me show you when we come up to the button. So again, we're only calling one variable, but because it's linked to different vehicles, it's going to have a different number. So we got a one over there on the left in the kill feed. This one we have a two and this one we have a three. So that, that's kind of the, the simplest way I could explain what object level or object scope is, is you, you can make one variable and then use it differently on every object. So like the, I made a race map recently and I was using this on it and I made it so every person would have a tally that was counting for laps that they did on, on the race. Um, and I say I made a race map, but I didn't, I didn't make a video on it yet. Cause it, I didn't really finish it, but um, so every person, so like you, if you have five people in the game, everyone's on a different lap using object scope, you could track that number on that person specifically on that player. And you wouldn't have to have like, 20 different variables that you just somehow linked up to a player to try and track where they are. It's like so easy to just track it on them specifically. So pretty cool how that works. And the other cool thing is, and I'll, I'll show it you here next. Um, when you're accessing that variable, if you're like going looping through a list or something like that, you, you could basically still just say, get that variable and then you, when you plug in the vehicle, you're going to get each and every one that's that's going to be different. So I made a, another script brain here because I wanted to show you global scope, which I feel like is pretty simple. But just in case anyone didn't understand how that works. Um, actually, you know what? Let me show you over here first. Because, the, again, the thing about global scope is you can use it between script brains. You could have 30 script brains if you declare a global scoped variable all other 29 brains that it's not declared in can access that variable. So it's, it's super nice if you're connecting things across different um, node graphs. So up here, I created a global variable called math. It's zero right now. But keep in mind, we're gonna jump to a different script. We're not gonna touch the script anymore, but we'll still have access to this math variable because we declared it globally. So back to the script this is pretty simple we're actually going to use our object scope on our different vehicles for this one so if you didn't watch my uh, area monitor video that's what's going on here that's what that big square <laughs> glowing square is i'll show you in a second but um, definitely recommend checking out the area monitor video because I've seen so many different ways that I could use area monitors in scripting. It's really cool, especially if you want to have things happen invisibly without like having to activate a button or things like that. Um, but basically what we're doing is when you walk through the big glowing square, we're going to set the variable math, which is our global variable, and then we're going to print it to the kill feed. But what we did here with with the when we're setting it, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the object scoped variable off the vehicle that went through the monitor. So if it's a ghost, it's going to be one. If it's the gun goose, it's going to be two. And then we're going to add it to what's already in math. So initially it's going to be zero. But like let's say we go through with the ghost the first time, um, that, that's going to add one to it. So we're adding it, we're, we're plugging it back in. Um, and then when we go to print, we're just gonna grab this math variable, this global variable, and we're gonna say, what what is it now, essentially? So we'll do a visual demonstration instead of me just saying it too many times over and over. So again, our ghost has a, a one assigned to it. So when I drive through, our global variable is now one. And if I drive through it again, we're adding one to that. Now it's two. And if we drive through again, it's three. But let's uh, let's grab our gun goose. So this is a, this is assigned a number of two. So we're going to add two to three, and we get five. And now we get seven. So it's kind of cool way to show you both the object scope 
and global scope. And unfortunately, I can't drive the Bracken Fern, but I think you guys get the idea. So um, hopefully this helped you out. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, reach out to me. I'm on a handful of the different Forge Discord channels, and I'm on Twitter. So just feel free to reach out if you have questions. I'm always glad to help out. And uh, hopefully you guys can uh, use this as you continue to you know, do your forge.